the main topic of this video is to show you one of the details that will help you to build the winner mentality how champions think and what they do before competing. A lot of the questions that I receive are about anxiety, how to get prepared before a game, how champions think, how they face their situations, and mixing up all of these things, I came up with the idea of how to get prepared before a game and how to face your anxiety. One of the biggest difference between champions and average athletes is the way they perceive anxiety. Champions see it as excitement. Average athletes see it as something bad and try to get away from it. The people who perform better are the ones who perceive anxiety as being something good. Anxiety and backstage jitters are, is something that is unavoidable. You cannot get away from them. They will happen and they are important for you. When you are performing and competing in a high level, it brings you anxiety because that's something important and something you enjoy doing. You're competing in a sport you love, I assume, and it will bring you anxiety. But this is not something bad, because anxiety and excitement are extremely close, but they both are far from being calm. And you should, be not, and you should not be calm before competing. Let me tell you why. Your anxiety is directly re related to your arousal. Your arousal influences your focus. And if you are too calm, you're gonna pay attention to many things, to all the things around you. And when competing in a sport, it means you may pay attention to the crowd, to the stadium, to the weather, to an injury, to being hungry, to something that is not important for you. And being excited to play will drive your focus to more important things that will take away the distraction from your game. So, what can you do with your anxiety? Face it as excitement and drive this energy to something important. Most of the people before competing, hear it from their coach, from teammates, parents, many people will tell you to be relaxed and be calm. But let me tell you something that is not good at all. Because when you force to be calm, when you try to force yourself to be calm and perform calm, you increase your level of anxiety. And you not, don't want to do that because being anxious is good up to a point where it does not take your energy away from you. A high level of anxiety is bad and you need to learn how to cope with it. And the first strategy that I'm going to teach you is face it as excitement. There is a study performed by Alison Wood Brooks. I even posted this on my Instagram because I found this was very mind-opening. In 2005, she performed this experiment in the University of Wharton, and what she did was to get 113 people to sing the journey song Don't Stop Believing in a Nintendo Wii game. She divided those people on three groups. The first group, before singing the song, they said out loud, I'm so anxious. The second group didn't say anything at all and they sang that song. The third group, before singing it as a pre-game ritual, pre-performance ritual, they said out loud, I'm so excited. Those people were all average people. They were not singers, they, were not, they didn't know about what the experiment was about. They were just there doing it for no reason, for just for the experiment, for collecting data and analyzing how people perform better. These average people had a very different results. The game basically gives you a percentage of your score on how well you did while you sang that song. So the results she got from this experiment was that the first group, the one that said they were anxious before singing, they had a score, they had an average score of 50%, half of the one they could get. Not a good score at all. The second group, the one that didn't say anything before competing, they were just quiet and did it, had a score of 69%, an average score of 69%. It was much better than the previous group that they thought they were anxious. They told themselves, oh, I'm so anxious just by singing, just by 
facing the situation in a different way, they had a worse score. The third group, the one that saw that the feeling they got, even though they were doing it for no reason, they had no pressure, they said, I'm so excited. They had a score of 80%. The only difference between the people that had 50% and the ones that got 80% was what they told themselves before competing. So take a moment to think, what do you tell yourself before competing? Do you want to be like those 50% people or like the 80% people? The only difference, they had the same skills, they were all average people. The single difference, the small detail that differentiates one group from the other was what they told themselves before performing the experiment. Now, apply this to your sport. How can you make yourself more confident and more excited to play? What, are your, what is your pre-game routine? So the first thing you, you need to do, you can start doing it right now, is the way you face your anxiety. You start facing it in a different way. Another thing I want to clarify to you is which is the right level of anxiety. And I even posted a video a while ago about what's your optimal level for performance. How can you create your own pregame routine? And if you haven't watched this video, I'll leave the link in the description. But in here, I want to clarify something that not everyone understands it. And how important it is to know your right level of anxiety and how different levels of anxiety will cause you to have a different level of performance. So this is a very famous study, a very famous experiment. This experiment is known as the yurtz dodson Law. It's very famous in the psychology field. This happened in 1908 in, the, in Harvard. Two famous psychologists, they got a lot of mouse. They divided them in three groups and measured the time the mouse took to get away from the maze. So the first group, the first group of mouse, received a too low shock. The second group received a medium-sized shock. And the third group received a too high shock. So guess which group of mouse performed better? The ones that could get away from the maze in a shorter time. The ones that received a medium-sized shock. It means the ones that had a medium level of anxiety, of arousal, performed better. How can you reach these points? There are several tools that I explained in this past video that I talk about how to create your own pre-game routine. So if you haven't watched, go watch it and prepare your pre-game routine. And last tip in this video, when you get ready to compete, when you are moments before in your competition, in the locker room, whatever you get prepared, don't try to remember the things you should do. The, the mistakes you may have, the problems you are getting, those things that on practice you know you're not, going, you're not doing so well, don't focus on them. Focus on the things you do well. Your job is to work on the things you are not doing good on practice. Prefer the game, focus on the things you do well, on the things you are the best or you know you do good, the things you have confidence on doing. Focus on these things. Most, the most important thing in this video if you actually want to apply something to your life, you just want, don't want to know the theory, you want to actually have tools to apply to your life, change your performance, change your mental preparation. The most important thing for you is this. Tomorrow, this video is being uploaded on a Sunday. Tomorrow, on Monday, I'll start a weekly challenge. And this first week, I'm gonna start with the topic that I'm talking about in this video how you can face your anxiety in a different way, how you can get prepared before a game. Every day during this week, I'll post a tool, a tip, or an exercise you can use to change your level of anxiety and to face your anxiety in another way. You may think, oh, it's just feel excited when I feel anxious. It doesn't happen like this. When you experience the same thing over and over, and you have the same thoughts, you create a neural pathway in your brain, and every time you face the situation again, you're gonna feel the same way. So, 
if before every competition you feel anxious, you tell yourself that that's something that is not good, and you try too hard to be calm, every time you have a game, you start getting anxious just because of that, because you taught your brain to behave like that. We don't have to worry because there are tools to fix it and to make your pregame routine powerful and make you confident. This is something I'll focus on during this weekly challenge. Every week I'll come up with a different idea for a different topic that will help you in your mental preparation. So, what I want from you is give me a feedback on this video, give me a feedback on the weekly challenge, the topics I should focus on, the drills I'm preparing for you. I'll post all the videos on my Instagram stories, so follow me on Instagram if you don't follow me. And last thing, don't forget to give me a feedback. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, share with your friends, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and that's it for today's video.